of the first steps that we're going to do is go ahead and remove these two torque bolts right here that are on the back side because they're even though this is a Brembo caliper there isn't a floating pin style like the Model S the, the Model S has pins that go through that you can quickly remove to fast swap the brakes the downside of those is that those have a little bit more friction to them uh, this design allows for the rotor to move freely so you know for a brake job on the Model S it, it's designed from Brembo's racing heritage to be able to quickly swap pads in a race in a matter of sometimes under a minute with an experienced person uh, but this requires the caliper come off not a big deal um, the one thing that I'm gonna get is a piece of wood to set underneath this so that we don't have a lot of undue pressure on the brake line so that's what I'm gonna go grab and then we'll get to removing it so we'll use our, our breaker bar here I'm gonna lift some put with my other hand underneath the caliper to hold it so that the bolts are easy to spin freely I can probably go grab my electric drill if I need to but I'm gonna grab my socket give me a little bit more mechanical advantage Leave the top one in just a little bit, undo the bottom one all the way. That way, just like you remove the five lugs off of a wheel, you normally leave the top one in so the wheel doesn't fall towards you, damage your pin on your caliper, yada, yada, yada. All right, so once this one's undone, I'm gonna hold the caliper with my hand, remove the camera so I can put the caliper there gently. One of those voila moments. So now we've got the caliper there. We can see our pads actually have a fair amount of material still on them. No hue. Well, there's one crack, hairline crack coming down in there. It's actually fractured about a third of the way through. Um, again, these were getting to 1200 degrees. So I'm pretty surprised how good they look. I have looked online. I haven't seen anybody post what the maximum temperature spec is for these pads. Um, I would imagine that they set them up to handle standard braking but the 1200 degrees we experienced was actually at the track with stock wheels and tires we do have our compounds and even when we went to the dragon yesterday um we didn't quite get the temps into 1200 because uh, we were holding back a little bit in our braking using more regen but back to the lecture at hand <laughs> so the pads here and we'll get the other side here so you can see them these are the spacers to push them back and remember at any point of this when you're working on something if it's not going easily it might not be going the right way it might be at an angle or fighting you or might want to try a little bit more finesse than force and it's really nice having that block of wood there because it's like having like a second hand holding it and that's all you gotta do to get the pad out so here's your your pad you can see one of the hairline fractures starting but we're going to retain these so that way we have them for you know whatever the useful life of the car is it's nice to not throw these things away and have them for the future so that one's out similar crack beginning it's about halfway through the pad now if you don't have a tool to push back the pads sometimes it's better to use the old pads to push back than your new ones so you don't damage the new ones but these actually push back really easily what I find is sometimes pushing one of them back first one of the pistons back first then trying to fight both gets this what's called stiction that happens sometimes around rubber seals moving freely so you can push them back with your hand and again one of the things I didn't mention is don't do this right after you've driven the car yeah, so here we got our new Carbotec pads for the front we've already pushed back the pistons so we're clear to start installing these now these are not beaded in yet so they didn't have time to beat them in for me the uh, the beat in process they typically charge about twenty dollars for it I do recommend having them pre bead them in if you can we didn't have time uh, so we'll have to bead them in at the track what beading does is it helps get a lot of the gases that get built up during the manufacturing process it, it 
gets rid of what they call the off-gassing. So these are actually made out of a uh, organic and Kevlar material. They're blend that they use. Uh, it used to be proprietary. I don't know if it still is. Uh, but this is the, I believe, RP26 pad. So these are made to run to about 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're hoping that at VIR we won't exceed that. I think we will. So to set them in, so these push up against here. Once these are on, you just slide them back. And again, we'd already pushed back the, the pistons. One thing I did as a mistake there is I got maybe a little bit of oil on my fingers and it might be touching that. So I probably should have changed my gloves. And again, we'll start with the top here so it holds itself in place. Move that out of the way. So you have top bolt in. So we're gonna go to 66 foot pound. I think it's around 80 Newton meters. And once you've torqued bottom and top, go back and torque the bottom again. And do the top again. It's also wise to go ahead and once you've actually gone out and done your first track session, to pull the wheel and just double check the torque. So the first step to do the rear brakes because of the electronic parking brake is to get the parking brake to release and this is ideally a two person job where you will have one person at the rear caliper that's going to remove a uh, electronic plug that drives the rear parking brake I'll show that to you in a minute uh, but from the display screen side to be able to get it so that the parking brake is not applied and you'll see that there's still a warning from doing the other side uh, but you put your foot on the brake you're going to go ahead and put it into neutral you'll hear that actually release the brake then the person in the rear will remove the uh, plug that i'll show you in just a minute if you were to get out of the door right now it's obviously going to throw the parking brake on so i'm going to go ahead and show you in just a second the removal of the sensor this particular plug right here drives the electric motor that applies the e-brake as well as does the work of all of your electronic traction control as well as your e-diff and other stability control but this plug right here has a gray retaining clip as opposed to like a compression type clip that you press down or pull up to relieve it you slide the gray portion here towards the back and then you will pull it away from the brake motor itself and then that way when the person who's inside opens the door it doesn't apply the brake again and make it difficult to change your path so now we're going to remove the electric motor from the back side and first thing to do is remove the bracket that's here that is holding the brake lines and then the next will be to remove the motor to actually get to what is an adjustment allen which will allow us to retract the single piston on this caliper. Thanks for watching Electric Performance. Please subscribe, share, and hit the like button.